You ready, Lex? Yes, I'm ready. Do you just want to come in and put the interfaces on our heads? And then I will proceed to tell you a few jokes. So we, uh, we have two incredible pieces of technology and a machine running Ubuntu 2004 in front of us. What are we doing? All right. Are these going on our heads? They're going on our heads, yeah. And oh. they will place it on our heads for proper alignment. Is, does this support giant heads? Because I kind of have a giant head. <laughs> Is this is is, just are you giant saying headphone? as like an ego or are you saying both. physically both? both? Okay, I'm gonna drop it on you. So it's a nice massage. Yes. Okay, how does this feel? If you if move it around. It's it's okay to move around? Yeah. It feels oh yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna tighten it at all because This feels awesome. It's a pretty good fit. Thank you. Yeah. That feels good. All right. So this is big head friendly. It suits you well, Lex. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, f I feel like I need to, uh, I feel like when I wear this, I need to sound like Sam Harris, calm, collected, eloquent. I feel smarter, actually. I don't think I've ever felt quite as much like I'm part of the future as now. Have you ever worn a brain interface or had your brain imaged? <laughs> oh, uh, never had my brain imaged. The only way I've analyzed my brain is by uh, talking to myself and thinking. <laughs> no direct data. Yeah, yeah, that is it. That is definitely a, a brain interface <laughs> that has a lot of blind spots. It has some blind spots. Yeah, psychotherapy. That's right. All right, are we recording? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. All right. So, Lex, the objective of this, I'm going to tell you some jokes and your objective is to not smile, which as a Russian, you should have an edge. Make the motherland proud. I gotcha. Okay. Let's hear the jokes. Lex, and this is from the Colonel crew. We've been working on a device that can read your mind and we would love to see your thoughts. Is that the joke? That's the opening. Okay. If if I'm if I'm seeing the muscle activation correctly on your on your lips, you're not going to do well on this. Let's see. All right, here here comes the first. I'm screwed. Here comes the first one. Is this going to break the device? <laughs> is it is it resilient to uh, to laughter? Lex, what goes through a potato's brain? <laughs> you, I already failed. That's the hilarious opener. Okay, what? Tater thoughts. What kind of fish performs brain surgery? I don't know. A neural surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're getting data of everything that's happening in my brain right now? Lifetime, yeah. We're getting activation patterns of your entire cortex. I'm gonna try to do better. I'll let it out all the parts where I left. Photoshop you, a serious face over me. You can recover. Yeah, all right. Lex, what do scholars eat when they're hungry? I don't know what. Academia nuts. That was a pretty good one. So what we'll do is, so you're wearing Kernel Flow, which is an interface built uh, using technology called spectroscopy. So it's similar to what we wear wearables on the wrist using light. So using LIDAR, as you know. And we're using that to image, it's a functional imaging of brain activity. And so as your neurons fire electrically and, and uh, chemically, it creates uh, blood oxygenation levels. We're measuring that. And so in, you'll see in the reconstructions we do for you, you'll see your activation patterns in your brain as throughout this entire time we are wearing it. So in the reaction to the jokes and as we were sitting here talking, and so it's a, we're moving towards a real time feed of your cortical brain activity. So there's a bunch of things that are in contact with my skull right now. How many of them are there? And so how many of them are, what are they? What are the actual sensors? There's 52 modules and each module has one laser and six sensors. 
and their the sensors fire uh, in about a hundred picoseconds, and then the photons scatter and absorb in your brain, and then a few go in, a few come back out, uh, they, a bunch go in, then a few come back out, and we sense those photons, and then we do the reconstruction for the activity. Overall, there's about a thousand plus channels that are sampling your activity. How difficult is it to make it as comfortable as it is? Because it's surprisingly comfortable. I would not think it would be comfortable. Something that's measuring brain activity, mm -hmm. I would not think it would be comfortable, but it is. I agree. In fact, I want to take this home. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. So people are accustomed to being in big systems like fMRI where there's 120 decibel sounds and you're in a, in a claustrophobic encasement in, in or EEG, which is just painful, or surgery. And so, yes, I agree that this is a convenient option to be able to just put on your head. It measures your brain activity in the contextual environment you choose. So if we want to have it during a podcast, or if we want to be at home in a business setting, so we, it's freedom to be where to record your brain activity in the setting that you choose. Yeah, but sort of from an engineering perspective, are these... Uh... What is it? There's a bunch of different modular parts and they're kind of, there's like a rubber band thing where they mm -hmm. they mold to the shape of your head. That's right. So we we built this, this version of the mechanical design to accommodate most adult heads. And but I have a giant head and it fits fine. It, feel, it fits well, actually. So I don't think I have an average head. <laughs> 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 okay, maybe... Maybe I feel I feel much better about my head now. Maybe I'm uh, <laughs> I'm more average than I thought. Okay, so w what else is there interesting that you could say while it's, on, while it's on our heads? I can keep this on the whole time. This is kind of awesome. And it, it's amazing for me as a fan of Ubuntu. I use Ubuntu Mate. You guys should use that too. But it's amazing to have code running mm -hmm. to the side, measuring stuff and yeah. collecting data. I it, mean, it, that, I just, I feel like, much more important now mm. that my data mm. is being recorded. Mm. Like somebody care, like, you know, when you, you have a good friend that listens to you, that actually like listens, like actually is listening to you. This is what I feel like, I'm like a much better friend because it's like accurately listening to me, Ubuntu. What a cool perspective. I hadn't thought about that of feeling understood. Yeah, heard. De yeah, heard deeply by the mechanical system that is recording your brain activity versus, yeah. versus the human that you're engaging with, that your yeah. mind immediately goes to that there's this dimensionality and depth of understanding yeah. of this software system, which you're intimately familiar with. And now you're able to communicate with this system in ways that you couldn't before. Yeah, I feel heard. Yeah, I mean, I guess what's interesting about this is your intuitions are spot on. Most people have intuitions about brain interfaces that they've grown up with this idea of people moving cursors on the screen or typing or changing the channel or skipping a song. It's primarily been anchored on control. And I think the more relevant understanding of brain interfaces or neuroimaging is that it's a measurement system. And once you have numbers for a given thing, a seemingly endless number of possibilities emerge around that of what to do with those numbers. So before you tell me about the possibilities, this was an incredible experience. I can keep this on for an another two hours, but I'm being told that uh, for a bunch of reasons, just because we probably wanna keep the data small and visualize it nicely for the final product, we wanna cut this off and take this, take this amazing helmet away from me. So Brian, thank you so much for this experience and let's uh, let's continue without helmetless. <laughs> <laughs>